Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee as usual before going to work here in Vienna, in Austria. I am glad to report that I got a nice Christmas card from our missing crew members, Pepik and Papik. Yes, they apologize for leaving our show, but they say that they found a more interesting job on the Danube on one of those boats with a restaurant and live music. So they're playing music there. You see, they also sent me this nice Christmas mug as a conciliatory gesture. So I thank them for that. And, you know, I think maybe they'll come back and that they just need a little time away. Everybody needs a little time away I've heard a say From each other it is the second week in December, and it's the Nativity Fast, or the Christmas Fast, for those of us who follow the Byzantine liturgical calendar, and it is Advent for the Roman Catholic tradition. So let's talk first about the history of fasting before Christmas in East and West. This part might be a little bit boring, the historical part, but I will be brief, so please stay with us until I get to the last part, which will be a little bit more interesting. The history of fasting before Christmas is more ancient in the West than it is in the East. Actually, the Feast of Christmas on December 25th originates in the West and was taken over by the East somewhat later, by the end of the 4th century. In the West, Advent, or preparation for Christmas, is first mentioned in the year 524 at the Council of Lerida, which prescribes strict fasting beginning with December 17th, that is, just nine days before Christmas. However, the duration of this fast actually varied from region to region in the various local Latin traditions. Concerning the East, the duration of this fast is actually completely unknown until the 9th century, when one source, for the first time, calls it the Philip Fast. This means that it began, according to this source, after the day of St. Philip on November 14th, that is, 40 days before Christmas, as it does now. However, we know that the duration of this fast actually also varied from region to region in the East, and it was still contested in the time of Balsamon in the 12th century. Balsamon, who was a famous canonist and patriarch of the East, writes that Monastics fasted for 40 days in his time before Christmas, but lay people fasted only for seven days. So lay people and monastics fasted for different periods of time before Christmas. But that's enough history for now. Everybody wake up and let's reflect a bit on the meaning of this fast. Today, as in the past, there are various levels and forms of preparation for feasts in East and West, because a feast is something that requires preparation, you see. Why do we have to prepare for a feast? Because a feast focuses in a very special, concentrated way on a certain great event, and we need time to refocus, to change gears, so to say, to be able to focus in this way on this event. So we change our behavior for a time with the upcoming feast in mind in order to gain this focus. Fasting is one of the forms of preparing for a feast, which today the Byzantine liturgical calendar, as we already said, prescribes for 40 days before the feast. Let me begin by saying, before we go on, that the Byzantine type of fasting does involve concrete, physical, eating, drinking, or not eating, not drinking, of concrete, physical food. There is, of course, an essential spiritual side to the whole business of fasting. However, just like Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, has an essential spiritual side, it does very much involve the very real eating and drinking of the body and blood of Christ because we, as human beings, consisting of body and soul, make our journey to God, as Christians, in body and in soul. So, if you are waiting for me to spiritualize fasting and say that it doesn't matter what you eat or drink, or something like that, then forget it. 
I'm not going to say that. It is true that fasting can be practiced and is practiced in various ways. Fasting can be, one, defined or undefined in its outer form. Two, it can be communal or individual. Three, it can be absolute or partial, meaning abstinence from all or just some food. And four, it can be limited to certain times or constant. In the case of the Byzantine nativity or Christmas fast, it is defined in its outer form, it is communal, it is partial, meaning abstinence from just some food, and it is obviously limited to 40 days before Christmas. Now, these four elements are interconnected and each have their reasons and meaning, but on this program I can only briefly comment on them. First of all, the outer form of this 40-day fasting period before Christmas is defined as follows. We abstain from all meat and dairy products, including eggs. On especially strict days of this fast, we also abstain from fish, oil, and all alcohol. You see, there are stricter days and less strict days, depending on what is going on in the church calendar. A great feast or saint, like the entrance of the Mother of God into the temple on November 21st, or St. Nicholas on December 6th, mitigate the fast because of a liturgical principle, and that principle is, the greater a feast, the less friendly it is to fasting. Now, why is fasting incompatible with the feast? Because fasting is all about preparation and anticipation, while a feast is all about fulfillment, or eschaton, if you will. Fasting prepares us for a vision, a special meeting with God in this vision of the feast. Similarly, in the Old Testament, the prophets, if you might remember, prepared for a vision of or meeting with Yahweh by fasting. Fasting is also a preparation for a special trial or mission. For example, the Lord fasted in the wilderness for 40 days before his temptations from the devil and before his messianic mission. The apostles fasted, as we read in the Acts, before their special missions. We today have fasting periods and days to periodically regain our focus on our own missions and trials as cross carriers in the 21st century. We don't do this alone, but as church, according to a common set of rules, because as I said, our fasting is communal. Because we are part of something bigger, we are not all alone. We are part of a tradition that goes back many centuries and also extends forward into the future fulfillment or eschaton while filling our present day life with meaning and hope. So like any part of the living tradition, fasting is about past, present, and future. The fasting period we are talking about is limited to the time before Christmas. Thus, our daily food choices, something very mundane, become suddenly interesting and filled with meaning. I am reminded at every step of my daily life of this event that is coming up. Finally, let me say that fasting is a free choice. It is also a gift that we receive freely and also reject freely if we want to. It is an aid in regaining our focus. However, if we do not have this gift for whatever reason, maybe it's just not in our tradition, or if we reject it for whatever reason, we need not grumble about fasting rules or judge people who fast if they wish to do so, as if they are medieval hypocrites. And on the other hand, if we do fast, we need not grumble about people who don't fast, like a bunch of angry birds grumbling and chirping at one another. As the epistle to the Romans says, those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. So, as God welcomes all of us, let us prepare to welcome Him as we make our way to Bethlehem with our own gifts in these weeks before Christmas. That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.